guys, Sam Kaufman here with TheHumanPath.com. Uh, we're running a little survival weekend this weekend, a 24-hour survival thing, so I have a bunch of students out doing that, making their shelters and their fires and such. And uh, while they're doing that, I thought I'd do a quick uh, video on a kind of experiment that seems to be paying off using the prickly pear cactus, cactus, which grows all over the place. We're in Texas down here in the hill country outside of San Antonio, San Antonio, central Texas, south Texas. You see prickly pear everywhere. You see it all over the southwest, Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, Utah. Um, and I wanted to use do a little experiment on not only using it as a water container, which I've done that before and that works really well, but I would like to try and boil water in it as well. So right now, as you can see, I've got a prickly pear pad and I got some other pictures that I'll show on this, uh, but um, I'm getting rid of the needles. Best way to do this, most people try to use a knife, and a knife is okay for some of the big stuff, but as you get it worn down, the best thing you can possibly do, in my opinion, is just use a couple of rocks, a flat rock, a couple, a small flat rock on a larger flat rock especially, and you just scrape the needles off that way. And that gets rid of these little, little tiny ones. They're really difficult to get rid of with a knife without making big gouges in it. We're trying to keep everything, we're trying to keep the surface of the cactus um, uh, uniform and, and not gouge into it because obviously we want it to hold water. And I've made a few gouges in here, but I think it'll be okay because uh, I'm not going to cut out. I'm not going to cut all the way to the edge, and this will still hold a good, you know, eight ounces to, to uh, even maybe as much as, as 12 ounces or even 16 ounces of water in here once we're done. And and that I know it will do, and it does really well. And of course, the prickly pear pack cactus pad itself is not only edible, but it's also medicinal. Uh, more on that on another video at some point, but. Um, you can hold water with it and drink without fear of you know any any of the water being toxic for you. Now, granted, if you ate a lot of the pad itself without cooking it, it would probably it would give you uh, some some uh, um, upset uh, in your in your stomach. Uh, both uh, can cause um, diarrhea and actually in large amounts can cause constipation. But uh, we're not going to be doing that. We're just drinking the water. And I've done this and drunk a lot of water out of them without any kind of ill effects or side effects whatsoever. And uh, just, you know, using it raw. And so, like I said, after now that I'm done with this and all the needles are off, these little, little tiny needles that are on here can be really a pain if you get, in, get them because they're real difficult to get out of your skin uh, if they get into for far. But uh, the way this is now, um, it's about ready. Still got a couple more little nubs here with some uh, cactus on it, some needles on it rather, uh, but I think it's just about done and just about ready. Okay, and on to the next section, which uh, what we're going to do is we're going to basically just cut this off. You could use either end, but I want to use the biggest end I can to hold water here, and I'm just going to cut it straight down like so. Now I can put this back out on the ground, and it'll actually grow another prickly pear. I mean, you, you see these things, they fall off of uh, the cactus, and uh, they'll grow, they'll actually start a new cactus. So um, it looks like I've got a few more needles up here on the top that just kind of stuck there. I've got a few in my hand now because I have them stuck on the edge there. Okay, and then what I do basically is I just, uh, uh, if you can see, there's, there's uh, a couple of different layers on the inside. And again, more on that when we get into medicinal and edible uses of the prickly pear, which are numerous. But uh, for me, I'm just going to basically try to cut that very gently down the center. And what I'm going to end up with is a big cup that I can basically squeeze on the ends and end up with a cup. So I'm going to take a few minutes to do that off the off camera, and then I'll come back. Uh, but it'll go pretty fast. I just uh, am trying to uh, save uh, camera time here. Uh, I'm getting low on battery as well. So be right back. All right, and I'm back. Hello again. Uh, that took me about two or three minutes. I was just what I did was I basically cut in here really carefully, using my knife all the way down. As you can see, I mean I'm all the way down. That's about a, a four and a half inch blade, and I'm all the way down on that in that cactus a little further than than the, than the working blade itself. Uh, apologize for the aircraft noise there. Uh, I'll kind of talk loud to get over it. But basically, what I've done is I've I've uh, cut into there, and now I've got a container of water. Now I've brought some water just to show you how it holds water. Oops, and as you can see, I got too close to this. I'm gonna do another one because what I did was when I was cutting these things off, I used my knife rather than a rock when I was kind of doing it in a hurry, and so I made a big leak there. But as you can see, I mean, it still holds water, but I'm gonna do an, I'm gonna grab another pad and, uh, and cut it because we'll get rid of that leak. And I'll be right back with you with another one of those. And that just kind of should show you, you know, you got to do this carefully. You can't, you can't uh, pop away these the needles from there too too roughly, and that's why a rock works better than using a knife. 
but I did shake it some back. Uh, sorry for that delay. So I took a few more minutes, eh, five minutes, to uh, grab another pad. They're all over the place here. Again, this is a prolific plant. It grows all over the place in the southwest, parts of California, obviously in Mexico, um, central and south Texas. Um, I found another pad and uh, it was a little bit smaller, so it was a little bit easier and I took my I took a little more care in how I got rid of the needles. And so this one's a little more, this is ready to hold water now and I've actually uh, emptied out a little bit of the, of the um, pulp on the inside, which again is edible as well as medicinal. Um, the Mexicans call it uh, nopalitos, if, if you're familiar with that. They cook them and eat them. So I mean obviously as a food on your way scraping this out to, to make a survival water container, you could also have survival food while you're, while you're cleaning some of that, that stuff out on the inside. You don't have to clean out very much of it in order for it to hold water. So now um, I put the water in there and I, have, I still have uh, some, some gunk a lot in there and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to kind of rinse it out a little bit. As you can see it's very, you know, it's kind of got a, um, you know, a lot of pulp to it, but it is very good. Just to prove my point. Oh my god! Just kidding. It's actually delicious. Oh, that is good. I mean, the flavor to me is good too. Um, more on this on this plant uh, later. Again, with this some edible stuff. So, what I want to do tonight today, I'm going to start a uh, fire. I'll do a little hand drill fire. Maybe I'll put all that on video out here, and then uh, once I get a fire going, I'm going to experiment with uh, see if we can boil water in here. So in other words, a, a container not only to hold water, but to purify water in if we needed to. Hey all, I'm back, and I'm trying to uh, see how this works with boiling water. I just showed you how water can be contained in a uh, prickly pear, uh, but I hear what I'm trying to do is boil it. So I've got the water here. I've got about eight ounces or so of water in this, and as you can see, it's a, you know, it's a decent size uh, prickly pear pad. And then I've got a little skewer in here to hold it open. And then as you can see, the, what's getting the heat there is starting to kind of cook. But what I want to see is if it's possible to actually boil the water, if you could actually purify the water. And it may not be. We know it's a good container, but the question is, will it work to actually heat the water? And I'm not good, being very good about putting even heat on the whole thing, but let's try it out and see what happens. So we'll check back with you in a little bit after we get some heat on it and see what happens. There we go. Hi, everybody. I'm back and checking on the water here and it looks like we definitely have a winner. We have uh, water that is absolutely, uh, that's hot. Um, I would say it's absolutely, uh, you could bring it to a boil. Not necessarily a rolling boil, but remember to purify water, you don't have to bring it to a rolling boil. About 180 degrees for about three or four minutes should be enough, 165 degrees for about 30 minutes, and that is very hot. Um, the stuff on the, on the surface is just uh, the, um, you know, again, the internal uh, fibers and the, and the stuff that's on the inside of there is just coming into the water and it's not a big deal. Um, it's definitely drinkable. And as you can see, steam's pouring off of that. And I would say that the whole, I can't really pick it up because it's so hot, but the whole idea of using a cactus pad, prickly pad, a prickly pear pad for a container of water and as well of a, uh, to boil water is definitely a winner. 